Okay, ladies and gentlemen, fellow teachers, fellow catechists, fellow Catholics, I'm very happy to present to you um, a master teacher himself, a favorite teacher of many students, Mr. Ferold Ruch Rehensha. Thank you very much, Mr. Antoy. Thank you, man. I hope everyone can hear me. And as I share my screen, um, Okay, let me now press this and share. Thank you again, Mr. Antoy. And uh, thanks for the introduction. Okay. So, my dear teachers, um, good to see you again. I'm back. And uh, I hope this afternoon will be another learning experience for all of us. So, I was given the topic on how to craft creative activities in teaching the sacraments. And uh, before I begin, I just would like to share with you uh, some thoughts that um, for some students, teaching religion might be boring. But then again, I actually told myself that uh, it can only be boring depending on how the teacher would approach the subject or even a subject matter. That is why it's crucial that we teachers who teach religion or any subject for that matter, we have to get to be updated ourselves. That's why I'm glad that you are all here attending this session so that more or less, I hope that you also get some ideas, which I myself was able to practice when I taught religion in Southridge and in Paref Southridge and in Paref Northfield as well. The crucial part of teaching religion is how the teacher would attack the subject matter. Keep that in mind. I'm reminded of teachers who have been good people, but not really good in teaching. I'm reminded of my vice principal in my previous school when I was grade school at Latran. Uh, she's a very kind lady, soft-spoken, and I, um, in fact, we all like her as a person. But when it comes to teaching, unfortunately, since she's soft-spoken, we could hardly hear her. And um, since she is our vice principal, we are kind of shy to tell her that we couldn't hear her. So what we do is instead of, you know, listening, trying to listen to her, we would try to count the number of times she would say the word no. Okay, that is her social noise. No, She would say no, no. Okay, so we would count the number of times she would say no. Then the end of the period, we would compare notes, but then we didn't get to actually listen to her, understand her lessons. And then I have another teacher, this time at USD High School. She's a very kind lady, funny. And uh, unfortunately, when she would, she taught us religion, I think in third year high school, and we didn't like her for the fact that when she would give quizzes, she would give us like 150 items of enumeration. Diba? I'm sure all of us, if we go through that kind of uh, teacher, Magagalit tayo. Pero naalala natin sila, but in that aspect. Okay? So imagine, 1 to 10. Okay, give us a list down the 10 commandments. So ang haba-haba, di ba? And then biglang 11 to 22, the 12 apostles. Okay, you were like, wait, what? Mom, please, slow down. Then biglang 23 to 29, the 7 gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's the worst part of it. Enumeration na nga hindi pa siya nagbibigay ng oras, tapos yung topic niya, iba-iba. Okay? So, it is because naman of these teachers that I also told myself that I don't want to be like her. I want to be like my teacher, religion teacher and religion in grade 2. When I was in grade 2, imagine, that was like years ago, decades ago. We all remember her because one of the things that I remember about her was when she told us that because I studied Latran, and Latran, you know, we are all boys. And she would always tell us that uh, not because you're boys doesn't mean that you don't carry a rosary with you. See, at least during that time in the 80s, so medyo pagka may rosary ka, parang you're a softy. But then she told us, no? She said, no, you're a Latran knight. You carry a rosary with you. Okay. So you're a boy, you carry a rosary with you. Huwag ka dapat, hindi mo dapat ikakahiya magdala ng rosary. So until now, no, until now, the, those words that she told us resound. Huh? 
And I even pass it on to my own students in Southridge and in Northfield. And I remember her name. She's Miss Bordeos. I just wish I know where she is. And uh, the last time, kasi that time when she taught us in grade two, she was planning to become a nun. She wanted to become a nun. But look at the influence that she has on me and even our my other classmates. Because until now that we're old, we have this batch uh, GC wherein we talk about our former teachers. And one of those teachers that we remember is Miss Bordeos. And the way she taught us those mass songs, we still remember. And again, I pass it on to my students. So let me now go into the definition of sacraments. Okay, when we're asked, students ask this question to us, no? Mom, sir, what are sacraments? Some teachers might actually say, oh, sacraments are baptism, confirmation, penance, reconciliation, and so forth and so on. Without realizing, as what I mentioned in my previous talk, remember on tapping the emotions with the students, sometimes when students ask us the question, what are emotions, we tell them sadness, joy. But of course, those are giving examples without really defining them. That's why I gave you uh, definitions from the philosophical aspect, psycholo psychology, as well as the Catechism of the Catholic Church. But today, I will also define what sacraments are in terms of what my teacher in religion in grade two told me. So she gave us the simplest definition of sacraments, and until now, I remember that. And she said that sacraments, it's an act outward sign instituted by God, by Christ, to give us grace. See, very simple, but that is what I use when I teach religion, when I taught religion in Southridge and teach religion in Northfield. It is an outward sign instituted by Christ to give us grace. Now, why is it an outward sign? Because it's something that's sensible, something that we can see, but at the same time, because it is a ceremony. So it's an outward sign and, and instituted by Christ, the master teacher himself, instituted the sacrament. And its purpose is to give us grace. Those are the three things that I tell my students, which was taught to me by my teacher in religion in grade two, Miss Bordeos. But then the word sacrament is actually not found in the Bible. What is found in the Bible are examples and events and situations wherein the sacraments were actually instituted. I'll give you a concrete example. Let's say uh, during the Last Supper, uh, if you recall, no, Christ actually gathered his apostles and told his apostles that um, this is my body, this is my blood, okay? partake of this, no? partake, of my uh, partake of the bread, which is my body, partake of the wine, which is my blood. And you also remember the time when Christ actually told his apostles na, uh, who sins you forgive, they are forgiven, and who sins you retain are retained. Actually telling, instructing the apostles that you, know, you, you, you hear confession, you can forgive the sins, of course, through Christ, okay? giving that res their res the responsibility to the apostles. Okay, so now we know no, no, that, that the sacrament is actually an outward sign. Now, my question is this, given these signs or symbols, okay, what would be the difference between the sacraments and these signs and symbols? So when you see the, the stop sign, it, of course, it makes you stop, okay? You see the zigzag road or the curve, curving road, okay? So you actually later on see it and you follow that road. Okay, if you have a par no parking, then you're, you're not supposed to park. And then slow down, you're supposed to slow down. And no entry, then you're not supposed to enter. So it actually tells you what to do and not what to do, these symbols. Okay, I'm, um, if, you, if you are driving, you actually know the symbols. But mind you, not everyone knows the symbols. If you ask people who don't drive, they actually don't know what the symbols are. But then again, my question a while ago was this. What's the difference, therefore, between an outward sign from these signs that you see on the road? Let me share this with you. The difference for me is that the sacraments will have the so-called IDE. They have the internal divine experience. That's the difference. When you, when, you, when you stop because you see this stop sign, do you experience the IDE? No, you don't. When you, when you uh, don't enter a certain road because it says no entry, do you experience the IDE? No. In fact, nagagalit ka pa kasi minsan nahuhuli ka ng, ng uh, traffic patrol. Okay? So that's the difference. And let me now share with you that the outward sign refers to, uh, is composed of two things, the matter and the form. Okay, the matter would be the same sensible things, 
or the exterior action used in the administration of the sacrament. Examples would be, so matter would be the materials, no? the water, the oil, the bread, the wine, etc. On the other hand, the form would refer to the words that are used in administering the sacraments. Like, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. This is with regard to baptism. Okay, so in, in other words, in order to have an actual sacrament, you have to have these two uh, outward signs, the matter and the form. So upon learning this, we now proceed to the sacraments, the examples now of the sacraments. So as what I mentioned to you a while ago, um, the sacraments are outward, outward signs instituted by Christ to give us grace. And there are seven sacraments. Well, according to the Council of Trent in the 16th century, they said that there are only seven sacraments. Now, using these symbols or signs, I will identify the seven sacraments. So on the upper portion, you have baptism, confirmation, Holy Eucharist. And the lower portion, from left to right, you have confession, you have anointing of the sick, holy orders, and matrimony. Now, I was able to identify them just by looking at the signs or the symbols. And you can do the same thing to your students, okay? So that they will be able to identify easily. Now, okay, so the dove, okay, that would be confirmation, okay? Because we receive the Holy Spirit in confirmation, okay? So you have that oil that must be anointing of the sick. Now, it will make it easier for our students to actually get to know the sacraments via the symbols also. And if they get to identify them, it will be easier for you to actually conduct certain activities that will be connected to this, which I will show you in a while. Now, upon learning what the seven sacraments are, let me now proceed by showing you the groupings of the sacraments. So the sacraments are grouped into initiation, healing, and service. When we speak of initiation, this is the entry point. I also was able to read an article which actually tells us that before, baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist were given all at the same time. Of course, years later, the entry point will now be depending on the age of the person. No? So when, when you are given baptism, you become part of the Christian world. Confirmation, you become soldiers of Christ. Of course, Eucharist, you receive the body and blood of Christ. On the other hand, the healing or uh, the healing is what makes us reconnect with God. Okay, Just like a wound, when we try to heal a wound, we try to do something about it. And these Sacraments would include reconciliation, which helps us go back to God, okay, for, and, and we are healed. And our, our souls, which is dead from sin, is now healed because of the sacrament of reconciliation. On the other hand, the anointing of the sick, you are being relieved of your suffering. That's why there is healing. Now, last group would be the service. Service would refer to loving others. That's why we have holy orders and matrimony. Now, in holy orders, the priests take the lead in making sure that his flock is led towards our final destination, which is heaven. On the other hand, that's why it's service on their part. On the other hand, matrimony, the union between the husband and the wife, actually leads them to do service in loving others. So when you have your, their own family, you have their neighbors, they help each other as a family towards others. That's why it's also a form of service. Now, the other groupings of the sacraments would include the sacraments of the dead and sacraments of the living. Sacraments of the dead and living actually just refers to the state of the soul. So if the state of the soul is dead because of sin, then these sacraments, baptism, which removes our original sin, reconciliation, which again uh, helps us go back to God, by removing our sins and anointing of the sick, by the way, is also uh, considered under sacraments of the living. That's why if you uh, read other books, you will actually see anointing of the sick, sometimes in the dead and sometimes under the living. Now, the souls of the, of the person is dead because of sin, but it is, the sin is removed because of these sacraments and thus given life via the sanctifying grace. And the sacraments of the living, on the other hand, the state of the soul is alive, but it is given more graces via sanctifying grace. So we have confirmation, Eucharist, matrimony, and holy orders. Now, upon learning these 
groupings, seven sacraments, then the definition, we are now ready to get to know more um, strategies to be able to teach the sacraments in a way that hopefully your students, our students get to enjoy. Well, in terms of uh, practicing these strategies, as I mentioned a while ago, I was able to practice some of them. And mind you, they are very effective. So let me begin by first sharing with you what Pope Francis uh, says about the sacraments. Sacraments are the manifestation of the Father's tenderness and love towards each of us. Wow, so beautiful. No? Sacraments are the manifestation. In fact, he didn't use the word God, but instead use the word Father's tenderness and love towards each of us. In other words, what he's trying to say to us is that because God loves us, he gave us the sacraments. So we have to take advantage of making sure that we really get to love the sacraments. We really love, get to love Jesus. Okay? We also get to love Mama Mary so that we get to make good use of the sacraments in order for us, not just us, but in order also for our students to reach our final destination, which is eternal happiness in heaven. Okay, my dear teachers, are you now ready? Would you like to play some sacrament games? Okay, if you are, let me pause for a while. <laughs> you see, in my years of experience in teaching religion, I remember I actually taught religion uh, in grade five, grade four before, and then I moved up to first year high school and then taught um, religion grade seven. Uh, together, uh, we were team teaching. You know, Mr. Dantoy and I were team teaching at Southridge, and I, my best friend. No? And he was helping me also how I'm able to teach religion. Well, let me first inform you that one of the greatest, I guess, weapon that we have in teaching religion, not just sacraments, but religion in general, is telling stories. Telling stories. Very important for us to remember that. And you, when you tell your stories, it's not just telling stories related to your subject matter, but telling them stories as a strategy for them to be interested in making them attend your next subject, meaning your next class in religion, the next meeting. Let me share this with you. I remember um, telling my students in grade seven, way back, I can't remember anymore. But what I remember was that the son of uh, Coach Tim Cohn of Hinebra was actually my student at that time. No? He was in grade seven. And when he graduated, he transferred to the international school. Na. But then I remember I told them this story, which I called the Barbie doll. Okay, the Barbie doll. What's the Barbie doll? <clears throat> and I told them that story at the end of the class. And I told them, guys, would you like to listen to a story? And they love it. Students love to hear their teachers tell stories. And then I said, okay, the story is called Barbie doll. Ooh, they're all like, like that. Oops, someone's calling me. Wait, let me just stop first. It's my brother. I have to decline. Okay, I'm really sorry. Uh, it was my brother calling. Uh, my brother is in Mindanao right now, and we're trying to fix certain concerns. And I hope he, I actually, I told him, that told my family that I'm giving a talk at 3 p.m. Let me now proceed by uh, sharing with you um, that story. No? I said the Barbie doll. Uh, This is so embarrassing. Uh, we're trying to resolve because a certain concern that we have in Mindanao. And uh, that's why he's calling me. So the Barbie doll goes his way. So um, I tell them that there was this boy who was born from this good family. And, uh, and, uh, and the first year that he had his birthday, the, 
the dad, no, diba, diba tayo, first birthday is very important to us. No, the dad asked him, I'll bring you, no, I told him, I'll bring you to the toy store, son, and uh, point to me what uh, toy you want. Then they went to the toy store, and then he points at the Barbie doll. And then the dad, of course, is like, wait, you're a boy. Why do you want a Barbie doll? But okay, uh, he didn't give him that Barbie doll. Instead, he gave him some toy uh, toy. Toy cars, toy cars, and then um, uh, okay. Can we have a two minute break if it's okay, my dear teachers? I hope you don't mind. Kind of urgent, but. Go ahead, Ruch. Okay, Continue. thank you so much. I'll uh, share again. Can you see me? Okay. Yeah. So can you see my share? Okay. Thank you so much. So, and then on the seventh birthday, ganun ulit. Uh, ganun ulit ang nangyari. So he asked his son, son, what do you want on your birthday? I want a Barbie doll. Okay. And then before, before the dad, I would ask, son, why the Barbie doll? You know, I have this so-called cliffhanger. I won't tell them the reason why. And then they're all like, I give out long pauses, sir. What happened? And I tell them, wait for our next meeting and find out the answer. And, oh, ah! and then they will all be crazy. You know, they're like, what, sir? Yes, but with certain conditions. What would that be? Number one. Make sure that you're prepared for our lesson. Number two, make sure that you participate in our class discussion before you get to know the next part. So the beauty of that is, boy, I'm telling you, they're so excited to attend the next meeting. And then they would wait for the uh, end of the lesson. And then they would really participate. And then they would even tell you, sir, I participated. Huh? And then, yes, okay, good. And then I take note of it. But then the third part, the fourth part goes until finally the fifth part. And then this is how the ending goes. So finally, graduated. No? And wala pa rin, bitin pa rin yung answer because next meeting, next meeting, next meeting. And then finally, the, the, the boy who is now a man meets an accident. And then the dad says, okay, son, you know, I'm willing to give you whatever you want. Okay, I just want you to survive this time. And then the dad, uh, the son goes, Dad, I want a Barbie doll. And then the dad says, Sige, I'll buy you that Barbie doll. But you have to tell me why. So he goes to the hospital, brings the Barbie doll, and then asks the son with some dramatic expression, pa, Son, why the Barbie doll? And then the son goes, dad was dying. I want the Barbie doll because the son expires. The son dies. And the boys are all like, ah, sir, we waited all this time. And then that's the end. I said, yes, that's the end. But the good news is, I tell them, no, the good news is the son goes to heaven. And we need to also go to heaven ourselves for you to know the answer on why the Barbie doll. And they're all like, wow. And they're all like, yes, sir. Now I want to go to heaven. Okay, for me to find out the answer. Okay, but it's a strategy, my dear teachers. And they loved it. And later on after that, they actually want to go to attend your religion class, even without that story. Because they now come prepared. They now want to enjoy and listen because of the lessons that you tell them more than the story of the Barbida. 
So that's a perfect example. It may not be related to the sacraments, but it is related to your religion class. So I wanted to start with that. But now that I have mentioned to you that strategy that's very strong, let's now proceed and play some sacrament games. Okay, let me now show you the first. Okay, this is what we call the sacraments concentration. Ayan. I'm not sure if you have played this game before, but I have, but not related to the sacraments. When I was a little kid, I remember the, uh, playing these cards, and, uh, but they made good use of pictures of animals. Okay, that when you open, let's say, for example, the, the cards were as big as this. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm showing it to you. The cards are as big as this or as small as this. And then when you open one card, it's like a monkey. And then you have to look for that other card, which will have the monkey in it. And then if it's not a monkey, then you close it. And then the next person will try to open the other cards. And then when you get to see that the person was able to open another card, which has the monkey in it, you have to make sure that you remember where the monkey was when you open it. That's why it's a memory test, a test in memory. In fact, it is actually a matching type, a preparation for the matching type test. And the only difference is that you have an example on the upper left-hand corner wherein you have a card which says baptism and the other card would show water. So the student will make sure that when they open baptism, they have to look for that water. Now, that would mean what? Around 14 cards lang. Masyadong konti, masyadong madali. It's easy. What you can do is you can include the matter and the form and add more, uh, add more to the seven sacraments. So meaning the names. So that means if you have 14 for this and then you have another 14 for the matter, you have another 14 for the form. And daming cards na yon. Talagang pahirapan na. And it's really going to be a memory test. Now, it's going to be fun if you have a small number of students. Pag marami, medyo magulo. What you can do is you can just divide the students into two groups. Kung meron kayong 40, maybe 20 in one group, another 20 in another group. Now, you just have to need a facilitator para may tagabantay. Now, if you're the only teacher teaching it, my suggestion is if you have a student who is already getting high grades in your class, you can actually ask him to facilitate in the other group. So it's up to you now how you're going to divide the groups. Now, is it going to be easy to have those cards? Yes, because all you have to do is actually type it in the computer and then print it out using the cardboard. May nabibili naman sa National Bookstore. And then you can cut it out into the small cards. That's the first thing that I'd like to share with you, my dear teachers. Maganda siya kasi uh, memory ang, ang target natin okay, kung naalala nila. Kasi kung talagang alam na nila, halimbawa, yung definition also, you can add pala the definition if you want. Okay, baptism and then look for the definition of baptism. Baptism and the symbol. Baptism and form. Baptism and matter. So ang dami nyo ng variation. So it's now going to be fun actually playing this game because there are different types of variation. At the same time, your target is memory. Okay, let me now proceed to the next one. Okay, this is called the kids play charade. Okay, the sacrament charades actually. And uh, here, we all know that the charade actually refers to action game. It's an action game. And kailangan magaling yung mga bata to actually show the sacrament or the matter, the form, again, the minister. So, a daming variation, and they have to know how to act. Uh, this is also a matter of identification. And uh, kung magaling yung batang umate, magaling mag-action, then it will be easier. But if, it, if they do not act well, it will be difficult. But you are actually watching sacraments in action. Yun ang kagandahan ng game na ito. And it's fun. It's actually fun. I tried this already and yung mga bata talagang sigawan, no? talagang nag -e enjoy So, ah, di ka magaling, di ka marunong. And then you can divide it in, them into two groups, just like what I'm showing to you right now. The person in the middle is the one acting out. If you notice, he's supposed to actually act out baptism and he's going to pretend to be like a baby. And then the girl pointing, pointing at him is actually about to give him the answer, to give out the answer. 
Okay, so that would be baptism. Okay, again, variations and another fun game for everyone. What about the third one? Okay, let me now introduce to you the sacrament pictionary game. If the charades would actually require the students to act out the sacraments or the matter form minister sacrament pictionary game would refer them, would actually help them draw the whatever is asked of them to draw referring to the sacraments. Like for example, if you see this girl drawing, she's actually drawing the sacrament of matrimony because you have there the husband and the wife. And of course, there's a child referring to the family referring to the sacrament of matrimony. Again, this time you are actually also um, showing the skills of uh, the students on how to draw. Okay? And um, depending on how they draw it, it will also depend on how the game will flow. Okay, so we now have three games. So I hope you're more excited now uh, thinking about your lesson on the sacraments. By the way, this does not even have to be connected to the sacraments topic. You could actually think of other topics. Maybe you're teaching other subjects, other subject matter. You can make good use of this as well to make your lesson fun. But then again, I'm just connecting this to the sacraments because I have, made, I have actually made good use of them when I taught religion. Then let me proceed to the fourth one. Ah, would you believe? You may not believe me, but I also made good use of Pinoy Henyo, the Pambansang Laro ng Bayan, in order for me to get to play and make our students identify the, the topics or the, the subject matter. Kaya lang, um, hindi siya masyadong nag-identify, uh, hindi kagaya ng matching type, no? Um, madali kang uh, natututo sila ng skill in matching. This time, it's really more of a guessing game, pero it's going to be fun. Now, some uh, people would actually make good use of masking tape and put it on the forehead. Ako, I'd rather not kasi baka masugat or whatever. What I do is I use a baseball cap and then put the cardboard there, stick it using the masking tape para safe sa mga bata. Okay. Uh, baka kasi mas scratch or masugat or mamula or something. So I'd rather use a, a baseball cap and they guess. Now, again, there are several categories. Pag kasi namin, sir, napakadali naman yan. Sabihin lang yan, sacraments, yung seven sacraments, tapos na. Oh no, you could actually make variation. You can actually make good use of the sacraments. Nahuhulaan niya yung seven sacraments. Again, they can make good use of uh, the, the matter, the form, the minister, and maybe even... Uh, the definition of sacraments. So, pag hinulaan niya, sabihin niya sacraments, pag sinamang yes, then he identifies the seven sacraments. O, di napakadali nga, sir? No. Because remember, you are going to time them. So, kung sino yung pinakamabilis na manghula, yun ang mananalo. So, masaya pa rin siya. Kasi, even if you, you tell yourselves na, ay, madali lang yan, madaling mahulaan. Yes, true. In fact, I remember the, the person who the group, the, the tandem who got the fastest score or the fastest time, three seconds. Three seconds. Imagine that. <laughs> Ang bilis. So sila yung nanalo, but the others also got 10 seconds, the others maybe 30 seconds. It doesn't matter. You don't have to wait. Of course, you tell them one minute para one minute kasi konti lang naman yung categories. Mabilis mahulaan. So one minute, pag hindi pa nila nahulaan, okay, you're out. You're out. Pero the beauty of the game is that they... Uh, learn, okay, they identify the sacraments, they identify the matter, the form. Kasi, you might tell me, anong skill ang natututunan nila dito? They actually get to identify. Kasi na-enumerate na nila. In fact, enumeration is one of the skills here. Because they, when they say sacraments, yes. So they enumerate the seven sacraments. So may learning pa rin. When, you say, when they say matter, pag sinabi ng bata, yes, it's a matter. Okay, they, they now enumerate the matter of that sacrament. Of course, they identify first sacraments. Yes, uh, no, matter, matter, which matter? Baptism, confirmation, yes, okay, confirmation. What's the matter in confirmation? Okay, so ito, okay. Or, the direction na sila so, do sa different matter of the sacraments. So, ang ganda, I'm telling you, um, nakakainis lang kasi sa sobrang gan exciting. Gusto ng mga bata, laging nilalaro. No, I remember I taught uh, recently lang yung grade Six, grade six in Northfield, no, when we had this. And uh, 
and they enjoyed it and they said sir we want more and then sabi ko wag wag muna no tama na muna yon then let's work on other topics and then pag marami na tayong lesson do sa other topics that's the time we can have sanayin din natin sila na wag masanay Okay, sanayin natin na wag masanay. Kasi pag puro yan lang ang gagawin natin, chances are, uh, baka wala nang matutunan yung mga bata. But then the nice thing is, again, bibitinin natin sila. And we will tell them na, okay guys, you want more? Yes sir, we want more. Okay, let's have more lessons. And then let's go back to Pinoy Henyo after we have learned many lessons. And then they get to study. And then they get to remember because alam nila na darating yung time na magkakaroon kami ng Pinoy Henyo game. Okay, so we have had four so far. And so far, I hope everyone is excited to actually make good use of these games when you go back to your respective classes or subjects in your respective schools. Ah, one of my favorites. Kaya lang, you have to have, uh, you have to play this game in the playground. So pagka sa classrooms lang, hindi kaya. It has to involve the the school, the school grounds. No? So pagka maliit lang yung school, uh, like Northfield, mas okay nga for me because Northfield QC was kind of small. So it's easier to hide the items okay, within the vicinity of the school. And then ang saya, yun nga lang, medyo magre-reklamo yung ibang teachers kasi nagahabulan no nag yung grupo we, uh, what we do is we group them into smaller groups okay and then you give them this list okay by the way my variation yan but the one that I will tell you for this afternoon will be this that's why notice that boy is holding a a folder okay that folder actually contains the list okay so a cup of water okay uh, sorry na double yung cup of water sa baptism a baptismal candle, an eraser for reconciliation, purple stole. Of course, you have to ask permission from the priest if you can make good use of it. If not, you can just make good use of a purple cloth to replace the actual one kasi baka naman ma-disrespect natin yung, yung uh, purple stole. So what we can do is we can use a replacement of a purple cloth that will symbolize the purple stole. Okay, an energy bar, which will refer to a Eucharist, a chalice, maybe a replica of a chalice, and then a toy dove, which will refer to, of course, the Holy Spirit for confirmation, and then a bottle of chrism. Now, of course, the chrism does not need to be chrism. You can actually make good use of just a, a cream, okay, cream, and then a bottle of super glue, which refers to matrimony, and then a wedding ring. Of course, it could just be a toy ring. You don't want to uh, use a real one. And then a drawing of your pastor, okay, for holy orders, or maybe a picture of your of your uh, chaplain, school chaplain, no, for holy orders, and then a priest vestment again for holy orders. You can just make good use of a cloth to actually represent the vestment, and then a band aid for anointing of the sick, and then a prayer book again for anointing of the sick, and then you can actually hide them even before classes start. For example, let's say you arrive at school early talagang to make sure no, na you are able to hide them because they don't know that there will be such an activity. And then during your religion class, that's when you explain to them the scavenger hunt. And then they will have to work on these looking for them in school. Now, there are variations kasi what you can do is if there are five groups, you can have five items so that one group sees one, they get it. Or kung ayaw mo ng five groups kasi masyado ng mahal because the items will come from your pocket, then you can just have one for each and then unahan na lang silang maghanap. Anyway, you may pinakamaraming nahanap, yun ang mananalo. But if you want to give uh, one item for each group, you time them. Yung nakuha yung lahat ng items, checklist, they can go back and show it to you and then, if they are the first ones, pero kulang, hindi sila panalo. The second one, kompleto, panalo sila. So, masaya ito because this is another variation of the so-called scavenger hunt, which Mr. Antoy actually loves doing when he, when he actually has an overnight for his advisory class in Southridge before. What he does was a bravery test. Okay? And then he would ask the high school 
students to actually be the ones to hide the items. And then the boys look for them, pero merong mga nakahandang high school student na mananakot. No? So this is another version, but this time they are learning. They are learning. In fact, what you can do is you remove in the checklist the list of the sacraments para sila mag identify Okay, for to toy dove, okay, saan yan? Okay, sir, sacrament of confirmation. Ayan. So, huhulaan nila. So, again, maraming skills involved. No? So, they get to look for the these items at the same time. They identify which item is related to which sacrament. Di ba ang ganda? No? So, ang ganda, the beauty, that's the beauty of this game. Kasi, nakalabas sila sa classroom, nagkaroon sila ng scavenger hunt, they get to look for the items, they have a checklist, at the same time, they get to identify. And maybe they can give the reason why. For example, the bottle of super glue, which sacrament? Okay, medyo maraming magkakamali dyan. And then someone says, matrimony, why? So, nag advance na kayo ngayon. Uh, nagkakaroon na kayo ng higher level. So, sinimulan nyo sa uh, identific uh, looking for the items, uh, ginawa nyo ng added item, which is they identify which sacrament they actually would be connected to. And then the third one, meron ka ng why. And if they're able to answer them, you get to know na, okay, alam na nila. Alam na nila. Maybe they're actually ready to take the SA, which we call the SA in Northfield, the summative test or the summative assessment. Okay. So, uh, again, I hope you are excited. I hope everyone is excited with this game, the scavenger hunt game. Okay, the sacrament scavenger hunt game. Okay, now, those are the five items, five games that I suggest. Of course, you can make variations, what I said. I'm just trying to introduce these games to you. Pero teachers, I know we are all creative. You are all creative in making sure that we make variations of the games that I suggested so that you can have your own game depending on your situation and depending on the environment that you are in. Okay, let's proceed to another one. Let's do a project this time. Okay, let's do projects this time. So the first suggestion that I would like to share with you is what I call the storybook. I actually was able to do this when I taught confirmation at Southridge. When I taught them the, the sacrament of confirmation at Southridge. I asked them to write I, to come up with a storybook. So I asked them to have one paper and then fold them into half and that will be the size of the storybook. Now, if they tell me, sir, masyadong malaki, they can actually fold it in another uh, fold that will be one-fourth. Na? Is that right? One-half, one-fourth. Yes, one-fourth. Huwag naman one-eighth. Masyado nang maliit ng one-eighth. Gusto nila ng iba, gusto ng one-fourth kasi masyadong malaki yung space ng one-half. So they might not be able to... Um, Occupy all the spaces. Ako naman, okay lang. First thing I ask them is, give a title for this. Okay, so it has to be related to confirmation. And then every time we have a lesson, if they think that it is something that uh, they, uh, that, that captured their attention, let's say, for example, I talk about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, and then they are captured by, by that topic, I said, sir, I would want to include it. That will be my page one or page two. Say so page one will be introduction. They, they introduce themselves. They talk about who they are uh, so that they get to prepare themselves for the sacrament of confirmation. And then if they want to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, then they may choose one gift and they are going to relate it to their own experience, even if they haven't received the sacrament of confirmation yet. So that's page two. And then page three maybe would be about the, the armor of God. And then page four, would be another topic, maybe the, the, the matter and the form of the sacrament of confirmation. And then they talk about it in terms of how they learn it. So they draw a picture of themselves. I actually don't mind if they draw a uh, stick person when they draw it in their... Because for me, for me, more important would be the content more than their drawing. Because we cannot expect everyone to actually draw well. Saka yung cleanliness, neatness would also be very important. That's why you can include that in your rubric. And then the last part, okay, they will have to preserve the last page okay, after na when they receive confirmation already. And that is where they're going to write the ending part 
of their story book. So this is the beauty of that of this uh, project. Kasi nakikita mo kung anong natutunan nila. And you can actually check it page by page. You don't have to wait for it up to the end. And then pay, imagine you have, what, 40 students and then they go to confirmation and you have to check five pages times 40 when you could actually have checked each of the pages even before they receive confirmation. So at the time that they receive confirmation, it's already the last page. And ano dali, nag-checkan, kasi 40 pages na lang yung check-checkan ninyo. So that's another suggestion that I would like to share with you, my dear teachers. And I hope you can make good use of it. Again, you can make some variations if you want. Next, another project. Oh, I love this. I love this. The seven sacrament stained glass window. Okay? Look at the boy on the, the picture of the boy on the right side, not the rightmost side. So you can see she's, he's actually showing the final product. So madali lang siya, teachers, in fact, for grade school students, kasi the only thing that you will need would be the following. Number one, uh, the materials that you need rather would be the following. Number one, illustration board. Number two, the colored paper. Number three, glue. And of course, you have a pair of scissors because they had to cut out. And then the one at the center, you see that cross, that can actually come from you. You can print it out and then let the students color it like what the, the student is doing on the upper left side corner. He's actually coloring it and then he cuts it and then he pastes it, glues it, and then he comes up with those different colors. And then you know what I did when I did this? I posted it in the classroom. So when you look around you, you see stained glass windows in your classroom. And then at the same time, they're proud of their work. And every time they look at it, they see the symbols. And for each symbol, they get to identify the seven sacraments. Yun, teachers, I hope you got to uh, have ideas already with regard to the project. So those are the two projects that I'd like you to work on. The third one has something to do with specifics now. Okay, specific because we are now talking about baptism. That baby boy there is actually my grandson from my nephew. <laughs> so I made good use of his own baptism in pictures. In baptism, we know that we become children of God. The title of this project is what we call What's in a Name. Because remember, when we receive the sacrament of baptism, hindi wala tayong maalala, di ba? Since wala naman tayong maalala, we can ask the students, okay? to work on the names. Because remember, in this sacrament, we became children of God. And you can ask them the question, what is your name? And who were you named after and why? You can, in fact, ask them to talk to their parents. Even ask them, mom, dad, how was I during baptism? Was I crying? Was I malikot? Was I asleep? So they can now make cuento. They can now tell you stories. Okay, so you now uh, get to know about it even if you don't remember anything. But the more important thing in this project is that you get to know your own identity because you get to know who are you named after, why. Okay, like for example, in my case, my name is Ferald. If you're curious as to how I got that name, my parents actually uh, combined their names and my two grandfather's names because at least the letters and uh, because they wanted me to imbibe the virtues that my parents and my grandfathers have. Like uh, Fe actually came from Felipe, from my dad. And then Ro came from Rosario, from my mom. El Loriano, from my uh, grandfather, dad's side. And Dominador, from my grandfather, mom's side. So that's how Ferrol came to be. Okay. So at least I know, no, my parents named me that because they wanted me to more or less uh, practice the virtues that my parents and my granddads practiced. And uh, my, I have a second name, which is Ray. Ray actually uh, is Spanish for king and Micaelo. Okay. Because there was, a, I think, a feast day of a king during my birthday, in my birthday. And Micaelo is actually supposedly for Saint Michael. But they wanted to add Angelo because Saint Michael's an angel. And then masyado ng mahaba. So they decided to just cut it to Micaelo. 
Okay? So that's the origin. But my tip, my dear teachers, if you're going to have children, please don't name them with long names. Mahirap kaya, especially when you apply or something to that effect. So this is a very good project if you're talking about baptism. Now, I mentioned this to you a while ago. Let's tell stories. In that uh, picture, you see Robin Williams no? capturing the attention of his students because of stories. And that is how we're supposed to tell stories, to capture the attention of our students. Let me share this with you. We teach the steps on how to make a good confession, and we give them the five steps, right? We have examination of conscience, we have contrition, the purpose of amendment, and then we have the, the verbal confession, and lastly, we have penance. Some of the boys have a difficult time remembering this, these steps, even if actually they go through with the steps. So what I do is I tell them the story of what I call the case of the broken vase. Of course, if you're American, you use American English, which is vase. If you're an English man and you use English, English, of course, you say vase. But let's just pronounce it as vase for now. The case of the broken vase. The story goes this way. So you see in the first picture, you see the dad talking to his son, telling his son, son, Please do not play inside. Please do not play in the living room. Okay. Why, Dad? Because we have an expensive vase located in the living room. So please do not play. You can play outside. We have a big playground, but not in the living room. But then when the dad leaves for work, the brothers played inside the living room. You can see in the second picture, and they were enjoying it. Unfortunately, in the third picture, they broke the vase, a very expensive vase. And so what happens in the next slide or picture? Here comes the boy crying out loud. And he says, my dad told me not to play inside the living room, in the living room, but I did not follow him. So now I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So he asks for forgiveness, but He's just talking to himself. No, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, dad, I won't do it again. I won't do it again. But he just talks to himself until his dad arrives in the afternoon. And his dad finds out that the brace was, vase was broken. Of course, he gets angry. And then the boy there confesses because the dad says, what happened? Tell me the whole story. And then the boy goes, dad, you told me not to play, but I actually played. And so I broke the vase and I'm so sorry. And then what do you think the dad will do? Dad says, I forgive you, my son. But there has to be a consequence and that will be, you will be grounded. Okay? You will be grounded for, let's say, a week. Okay, so you won't be able to play outside the house, neither play inside the house. You just stay in your room and uh, maybe just stay in the house. Okay, that will be your consequence. So upon telling that story, I help them recall. I tell them, okay, so what was the first thing that the dad said? Okay, the dad said, do not play. What will be your, what do you think will be uh, that statement be related to? When the dad says, do not play in the living room, then if, and then I will tell them connected to the steps. Okay, sir, those will be the commandments of God. Perfect. Yes. But then you committed a sin because you disobeyed what the dad told you. And then you committed the sin. You broke the vase and then followed by you going through the steps of confession now you now realize recall what my dad told me what your dad told him told you and that's the examination of conscience because he is now recalling what the dad told him the commandments and then he says oh, i'm so sorry no that's the contrition and uh, you know i promise not to do it again i'll follow you next time that's the purpose of amendment the dad arrives asks him what happened and he tells him his verbal confession to the dad and then the dad forgives him but with penance and the boys remember this and this is a simple story of the case of the broken vase but they remember okay they remember even when they're old 
because now they recall, okay, I'm like that child okay, who broke the vase. So I examined my conscience, recalled what my dad told me. Then I said, sorry. And then I promised not to do it again. And then finally my dad arrives and told him my confession. And then my dad told me, you do this penance. Okay, I hope you can make good use of this when you teach confession, especially the specific steps on how to make a good confession. If we are to know, again, let's go back to Pope Francis. If we are to know, okay, I'm just showing the picture, by the way, but the quote uh, came from wisefamousquotes.com. If we are to know the Lord, we must go to him, listen to him in silence before the tabernacle and approach him in the sacrament. So it's important for us also to help our students love God by talking to him in the tabernacle. Okay, and I hope you get to let them practice this because they get there, they get to talk to him. Let me now show you a project that I did for the sacrament of confirmation. I introduced to them the so-called armor of God. And in this armor of God, you have the different virtues. No? You have the helmet of salvation. You have the breastplate of righteousness. You have the feet uh, of peace, and you have the shield of faith, and the belt of truth, and the sword of the spirit. What I tell my students is that when you become, when you receive the sacrament of confirmation, you become soldiers of Christ. And when you become soldiers of Christ, you wear this armor to protect yourself from sin. And of course, to also defend God okay, from the people who want to from the devil who want to destroy God, destroy the name of God, and so forth. Okay, And I asked them to draw. I asked them to draw. They could copy this drawing, or they can have their own armor of God, Okay, their own armor. And then I asked them, of course, to identify their best breastplate, their helmet, and so forth and so on. And then instead of defining, okay, defining what the helmet of salvation is, they get to know the definition. And they are going to write what they should do in order to protect themselves and protect God in terms of the helmet, in terms of the breastplate, in terms of the feet, and so forth and so on. So hindi lang siya drawing, hindi lang siya identifying, kundi you also give them that opportunity to tell us, to tell the teacher what I am supposed to do, sir. When I receive the sacrament of confirmation and become a soldier of Christ, this is what I'm going to do. Ang ganda, ang ganda kasi meron siyang activity na nalalaman din nila kung anong gagawin nila. Hindi lang siya simply drawing, hindi lang siya simply identifying, but it's also making sure that they have, they know what they are supposed to do. Okay? Now, let me now proceed to the mnemonics naman tayo. Ayan. Okay. This refers to the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Ah, uh, you know, some of the boys have a hard time memorizing the, the, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I tell them, okay, do this, guys. Imagine that I'm a magician and I will give you a magic word. And when I give you that magic word, the seven sacraments would appear. And then they get excited and said, sir, give us the magic word. The magic word is walk puff, walk puff. And then they go, repeat after me, walk, puff. And then they repeat, walk, puff. What's the spelling of walk? W-U-C-K. What's W? And then they stop. Okay, let me share with you what W is. It's wisdom. U is understanding. C, counsel. K, knowledge. P, piety. F, fortitude. And the other F is fear of the Lord. And they will appear in front of you. When you say the magic word, and boy, I'm telling you, they get to memorize it using this mnemonic. Okay, when they're inside the classroom, gentlemen, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, walk puff, sir. What does walk puff stand for? And then I call one, W, wisdom, sir, you, understanding, counsel, knowledge, and so forth, and so on. And they get excited. And let me share this story with you. One of my students from grade seven, when he was in college, he messaged me and he said, sir, guess what? I said, what? Walk off, sir. Oh, you still remember? 
Yes, sir. And guess what? My religion teacher, theology teacher, asked us, the whole class, this question. Give me, enumerate the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And he volunteered. And he goes, wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, piety, fortitude, and fear of the Lord. Of course, the teacher was so amazed. He's like, what? Where did you, what school are you from? And he was so proud to say, Paref Southridge, ma'am. And the teacher goes, wow, Paref, you remember the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And he was so proud. And of course, he was so happy because, you know, everyone, the whole class clapped. And uh, of course, the girls are all like, wow, impressive. <laughs> and that's why he messaged me. And I told him, I'm happy that you still remember the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So do mnemonics. Let's do mnemonics. And then let's also teach students songs. Okay, This is something that, again, I learned from my grade two teacher, Miss Bordeos. Okay, I hope she's still alive and hopefully we get to see each other someday. The picture, by the way, is uh, Peter Rosalita, a Filipino who joined the America's Got Talent and very good singer. Unfortunately, he lost in the after the semifinals, he didn't qualify to the finals. How do we get to teach songs? As I told you, my religion teacher taught me songs that I remember until now. And I share it with my students now. For example, I received the living God. Every time, this was already during the, the pandemic, online. Na. Then when I learned that actually mas madali pa lang magdikit ng video from YouTube and sa Google, Google Slides no? because they are actually uh, partners. So I got to share with my students videos and with lyrics. Like, for example, I received the living God. It's, uh, our topic was, has nothing to do with, with sacraments except for the other batch, no? Meron ng sacraments. But I use this and I teach them and I sing first. No? I receive the living God. And my heart is full of joy. I receive the living God. And my heart is full of joy. And then I tell them, sing with me. And then, you know, at the end of the song, they tell me, sir, wow, I love that song. And I tell them what the song is about. Loving God in the Eucharist. Loving Jesus in the Eucharist. And then... I remember Miss Bordeos also teaching us the song uh, One God. No? Millions of stars plays in the sky by one God. Okay, and then I tell them that uh, this song has to do with, of course, God. No? God the Father, and we are his children. And I learned this song from a grade two teacher. And they were like, whoa, sir, really? Yes, and I'm teaching you this song now. Now, you might ask me, sir, what's the... Connections, will they actually learn? Yes, because the fact that you're teaching them the songs, they're actually learning about God, about the Eucharist, about the sacraments. And then I posted also here, uh, Billy Joel. Huh? I guess the ones who are my age would know who Billy Joel is. Uh, for those who are in the younger generation, Billy Joel actually originally sang the song Uptown Girl, which was remade by Westlife, which became a big hit to the younger generation. Why Billy Joel? I, I found out that Billy Joel is actually an atheist. But then he composed this song called The, the River of Dreams. And then when I read an article, I, I realized that The River of Dreams actually talks about baptism. Okay? And then Billy Joel admitted himself that, Taka muna, why am I writing this song? This song is religious and he is being hounded down. No? Even when he goes to the shower, he, he would be thinking of the lyrics, he'd be thinking of the music. And finally, he composed it and he, he finally released it as a single. And it's a beautiful song. And in that article, sabi nga nila, we don't care if the person is an atheist. What we care about is the song that he has written and people will learn something about it. And, and, and the younger generation now who might know more about who would rather listen to songs that are not mass songs, who would prefer to listen to the likes of Billy Joel, maybe Sting of pol the Police, uh, you could actually look for, search for songs that are um, recent pop hits or pop hits, not necessarily recent, which you can actually use to introduce to your students. 
So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that we're not limited to the mass songs. In case you you look into the profile of your students and see na taka muna kung ayon nila ng mga mga mass songs, so pop songs muna, and then maybe later on that's when you introduce the mass songs. The songs help a lot. Okay, that's why we. Oops, let me just skip this because we're running out of time. And uh, this one. Uh, okay, let's teach our students to fall in love with the Eucharist. And let's come up with the SSS. Okay, the SSS actually doesn't stand for Social Security System. I remember when I was in Southridge. And uh, by the way, I'm very happy to inform you that Mr. Rantoy and I, okay, we're instrumental in coming up with the SSS, the Southridge Servers Society. Okay, uh, it all started in 1999, if I'm mistaken, or maybe 98 or 99. We started by uh, asking the seniors, I don't know if Mr. Rento will remember this, the fourth year high school students, we asked them to come up with an outreach to the auxiliary staff, you know, the security guards, the janitors, the bookstore personnel, and so forth. And then it was so successful. Then later on, Mr. Rentoy called my attention. And Mr. Rentoy is my best friend. Then he said, Mr. Rentoy, Wala tayong Knights of the Altar or Altar Boys. Kasi in other schools, di ba? Meron silang Altar Boys. Sabi niya sa akin, come up with the club. Sabi niya. Be the moderator. Sabi niya. And then, syempre, when your best friend tells you to do so and he's used as an instrument by God, I said yes. But he doesn't know this, but I'm sharing it with you now. Kabado ako, kabado ako. My first time to come up with a club. Of course, Mr. Rentoy uh, is the founder of it you know, because he told me to come up with that club. And when we, I came up, he said, Sige, when I said yes, he was the one who coined it and he said, let's call it SSS, Southridge Service Society. So with Mr. Rentoy founding it and I was at the helm, it was very successful because until now, the SSS exists in Southridge, even without me, even without Mr. Antoy there at Southridge. In fact, we have actually transferred the SSS to the NSS, which is the Northfield Server Society. Now, what is the beauty of this club? The beauty of this club is that the boys get to serve at Mass, and they get to love serving God at Mass. And what better way to actually make them love the sacrament than to come up with something like this? And the best part is that we don't, they don't just serve at Mass, but they also actually do other things. No? Let's talk about the pictures that you see. On your lower left is actually the uh, Eucharistic procession. Uh, in, in Southridge, we have this every year no, during the face-to-face. -face. Uh, we're in the different classes actually come up with carpets no, of flowers. Okay, you see there the carpets. And the server society is asked to be the one to take the lead in making sure that we do the procession and guarding the monstrance with the Holy Eucharist inside. We do outreach work, the one in which we're all wearing blue. Okay, that's a senior high school uniform of Southridge. We did an outreach there. That's why we are in another place. That pres the one on the right is the president at the time, si Ice Katindoy. And then below are actually now the new generation of SSS. The one at the center is Gabi Gana, who is the vice president of the student council of Southridge. And he was with us during the PARF Future Leaders Summit which, as I mentioned to you, was organized by Mr. Antoy and Mr. Salama. And on the upper right-hand corner is Woodrow's. Our servers are actually invited in Woodrow's to serve. So, of course, nag-uunahan yan. No, nag yan. At the start of the school year, they already ask us, sir, meron bang Eucharistic processions at Woodrow's? Meron ba silang confirmation mass? Kasi kami magsuserve. And nag sila. Okay. Pagka confirmation sa Southridge, oh, who wants to serve? Sir, siya na lang, siya na lang. Pero pag Woodrow, sir, ako, ako, ako. Okay. So Woodrow is our sister school. And uh, because of the SSS, no? 
we got to reach out to many people. Okay, uh, you see there the outreach that we did in Southridge every year na lumawak na, na kasama na yung families ng security guards and uh, uh, janitors and so forth. And then the best part is the server society members of Southridge are the ones who organize it. The one below is the one for Northfield. Okay, so we adopted that also in Northfield. So best, best for us to have something like this. It's outside your religion classes, but it's a way for them to get to know and love the sacrament. I actually posted here, uh, the one on the left most is Gabi Gana again. Now, this was taken during the ending of the Paref uh, Future Leaders Summit. And then the one on his our right is Paulo Sandejas. Paulo actually is a, a member, uh, became an officer of the South Ridge Server Society. And I'm not sure if you've heard, but Paolo's song called Sorry became viral recently because V of BTS, the K-pop group, uh, announced no, that Paolo Sandeja's song is part of his uh, list, song list. So proud, no, we're proud that he's a server society and he was also my mentee when he was in Southridge. So they, they're, after that, they branch out. Uh, they branch out. Even if they don't, actually get to, to do the things that they did in the South Asian Service Society, they still continue to do what they did in the SSS. And at the same time, they get to inspire other people as well. And this last picture that I'd like to show you, look how young we were, Mr. Antoy. Okay, the reason I'm showing this to you is because if you look at the le leftmost, that's actually the actor, Jake Cuenca. If you're familiar with Jake Cuenca, and beside him is a uh, congressman. Is he a congressman now, Mr. Antoy, or counselor? Mikey Murada, otherwise known as the husband of Alex Gonzaga. And the reason why I show this, because I wanted people to know that Jake Cuenca actually was an altar boy. And he's religious. People may not know this. And, and in fact, I'm very happy because he, uh, in the process of him serving God and loving the Eucharist, the sacraments, he actually became religious. I remember the time when I talked to him before, when he visited Southridge and uh, before he, when, when he transferred from GMA to ABS-CBN, you know what he said to me? He said, Mr. Rehensha, the first thing I did was I went to the Southridge chapel and prayed that my decision, that God will help me with my decision Okay, to transfer to ABS-CBN. So the beauty, that's the beauty. No? So you have to have something that is outside of your uh, classroom in order for you to really get to see that your students get to practice the sacraments, not just inside the classroom. And you know, giving these games, giving those projects, they are good. But what better way for us to see them really in action, loving the sacraments, if not coming up with a club like the South Asian Service Society, the Northfield Service Society. And uh, because uh, when they get old, they actually remember it. We, we, had, uh, we got to see each other when we had the inter-center of the, the different Opus Dei centers at uh, UST. And we grouped together and we talked to each other and we recalled and reminisced the SSS or the South Asian Service Society. Next, make videos. I'll make this fast because I have one or two more items before we end. Make videos of the sacraments. I also did this. This became my performance task. So each group will now be assigned a specific sacrament and they actually perform it. And you know what the best part is? We show it in the classroom. And then now that we have the YouTube social media, I actually asked them if they could put it up in YouTube. Pwede naman sila mag-private setting doon kung ayaw nilang gawing public. And then the best part is this. I give them awards. I give them the best actor, best director, best picture, uh, best supporting actor, best screenplay, and so forth. Because of those awards, talagang ginagalingan nila. Ginagalingan nila. And then I ask 
other teachers to help me out because sino yung best actor nila, the supporting actor and so forth. So the beauty, that's the beauty of coming up with these uh, sacraments. And then I think this is the last one. Let's teach them to write songs. Last year, you know, we have the JCL, Jesus Centered Learning Seminar Conference, which uh, was organized by PAREF. And this year, I would like to inform everyone that Mr. Rantoin will be at the helm of the JCL. So I'm sure Mr. Rantoin will make more announcements later on. But they called us to write a song that will be used as part of the conference. It's an international conference. And then our executive director called our attention and said, Mr. Rancho, wala nagsasubmit except for one. So submit naman tayo, Northfield. Then I called the grade, attention of the grade 12. They said, no, sir, we're so busy with so many things. Then I called the attention of my advisory class. And in my advisory class, I said, guys, uh, we have to heed the call. And uh, we have to answer to the call. We, let's participate. And those who want to join me in writing a song, stay after the advisory class. That was in the afternoon. And these five boys stayed. And I said, sir, we're ready to help. And you know what? I'll, I'll fast track because I'll show you this, that video. I'll fast track. When you write a song, it's either that you come up with the lyrics first and then you have the music. You know what? This is a miracle because we wrote the song and the, mu and the, the lyrics and the music at the same time. So sabay. So Jack Paredes, the one in black and white, said, Sir, I volunteer. I'll make the music. He made the music. And then the rest of us came up with the lyrics. No? So I would edit it. I would add, subtract. In fact, the words, I heed the call, no? I heed your call, okay, is part of the lyrics. You'll hear it later on. And then guess what? The jive, yung song and the lyrics. Sabi ko nga pa, nangyayari ba ito? Nag jive. So, so we have the lyrics and let's see the song. And then see si Santino Galvez, the one, in, uh, the one at the center bottom below uh, Jack, was our lead singer. And then... We sang the song and then exacto, it fit. It fit. I was like, it was a miracle. And this is, they told me after, no? Sir, you know, we learned to love Jesus because of this. So teach them how to write songs. Now, I am not a songwriter. This is my first time to actually join in writing the song. And God will be there to help us, help you. And did we win? We placed second. And we didn't really mind. Because for us, the more important thing is we were able to share our joy. And my dear teachers, here is that song. Is there a sound? I hope there's sound.
Okay, so let me stop. And uh, you've seen it and you've heard it and beautiful. All you need to do is to have a theme. And then from the theme, you tell your students what you intend to talk about. And once you have that, have someone who is good in music and let him be the one to work on the music. And in the process, we don't just get to show God, no? Now we love the sacraments that we actually have something concrete that we can offer to God. And that music video was actually shown during the JCL conference. And we are proud you know, that we have students from Paraf who was able to do so. And uh, my dear teachers, it is another wonderful afternoon of learning. But I really do hope that whatever you learn from these seminars that we have, uh, the last two weeks will help us practice what we have learned. As what I always tell my students, let's make this happen. Let's make the things that we learn happen. We get to love the sacraments. And in the process of loving the sacraments, we love Jesus and we love Mama Mary. So again, a pleasant afternoon to everyone. And thank you so much for being here with me, with us, Mr. Antoy and myself on this topic on how to craft creative activities in teaching the sacraments. My dear teachers, let's make this happen. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Rehensha. We would like to invite everyone to turn on your videos for our um, class picture taking. By the way, when you fill up the form for the evaluation, just click on uh, Emmanuel Rantoy. Uh, I think Mr. Rehensha's name does not appear in the choices. It's okay. Just uh, click on the Emmanuel Rantoy and then uh, fill up the rest of the um, questions. I mean, answer the rest of the questions and you will receive your certificate. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, let's now put on our biggest, widest, most sacramental smile <laughs> for our picture. Page one. Smile. Uh, let's go to page two. Uh, you can turn on your videos. Smile. And finally, page three. Smile. Okay. Uh, let me see. I have to make sure it's taken. Great. Thank you once again to everyone for joining us. Tomorrow, Sir Burns Kaasi will continue with a second to the last session and on Friday before I fly to Sri Lanka I will be with you for the uh, Marian apparitions discussion um, how to use the stories of the Marian apparitions to bring people closer to Jesus 
Thank you so much. And uh, we wish you a great afternoon, the rest of the day. And we hope to see you in our other future sessions. Thank you so much, Mr. Hensha. We'll see you again in some future sessions. Bye, everyone. Stay safe. God bless. Bye.